Hey, can I park here? Chuck's never seen one of his boats sunk before. Throw me the water skis. I'm not a slob of a boat owner. What's wrong with you? I bet you this guy still works. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to beautiful Lake Powell right here in Bullfrog Marina, Utah. Now listen, this recovery that we're about to do, uh, and I know I always say this, but this is gonna be one of the biggest and craziest, probably for the sole reason that it's a very personal recovery to me because we're recovering a boat that I sank with my family on it. The plug got pulled at some point while we were just floating around, and then I filled the ballast tanks, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain the whole story. Uh, you know, later on throughout this video uh, of exactly kind of what happened, but it wasn't Pavati's fault, uh, wasn't really our fault because there was just some stuff happening that nobody knew about, but it was just me and my, my family, my three kids, and the boat just sank straight to the bottom, and it was about 100 feet deep when it sank, so. got picked up by the Forest Service um, after a sank that was gather all of our stuff. And now that happened in September. Now here we're here in April. We've got the guys from Adventures with Purpose who are experts at underwater recovery. Uh, we're experts at above water recovery. We've got the River Rhine Patrol boat out on its maiden voyage, which I'm really excited about because then you just look at it. All this work that we got done in like seven days is unreal. So uh, we're pretty excited. This is gonna be a good trip. We've got Jim on his pontoon boat, um, all of us on this boat. This boat is nowhere near full capacity. We could still probably put on another 10,000 pounds. Um, we've got the Adventure with Purpose boat. That's what they use to sonar. So we're gonna go to the general area of where the boat sank. They'll scroll around, they'll find it, and then we're just gonna drop anchor, and they'll dive down, hook onto it, and we're gonna do one of two things. We'll either use the big airbag lift bags that we use to lift cars out of the water, that Adventure with Purpose does all the time, or we also installed a big 18,000 pound mile marker winch on the front of the boat. So we might not even have to use the airbags. We might just be able to get the divers down there, hook onto the boat, winch it up. And then once it's on the surface, we've got a big uh, water pump. We'll pump all the water out of it, uh, put the plug back in it that came out and uh, tow back to the marina here and then get it on the trailer and get out of here. Man, it is not a good day for fishing. One hour later. They are not biting today. Where are these fish at? Two hours later. It's fish here. You some fishy here. Fishy, 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 fishy. Got my bait on. I got the perfect rod. Real setup. Where are these fish? You really need a trolling motor on this too, to be honest. Hey, buddy. Hey, not by today. No, no luck, huh? Yeah. You realize that fish don't usually bite on days like this, right? They also don't typically bite in parking lots. But I do understand your love for the sport, which is why I wanted to show you something. There's a game you can get on your phone it's called Fishing Clash. You see, Fishing Clash has like some of the most like realistic graphics of any mobile game out there. Dude, listen, you can actually download the game and go fish anywhere you want in the world. You can do it from the shore, you can do it from your boat, you can actually upgrade your rod, your luge, bait, tackle. Hey, guess what? You can also compete, like get in tournaments, fishing tournaments with other fishermen. And you can do it all from the comfort of your own phone. So weather doesn't matter, it's water or the lack thereof, doesn't matter. And as you play the game, you can upgrade your fishing skills so that you can do better in the tournaments. And since you know you and I like a little head-to-head -head competition, cut to the mega truck race, we can form clans. Or we can compete against each other, other family members, other people all over the world. Bro, Fishing Clash is gonna get you out of the rain and into the best fishing holes out there. You see, bro, here's all you gotta do. You click the link in my description below, right? You go download the game. You use my gift code, Fish with David, which 
I guess it would be both of our gift codes, so you're gifting something to yourself as well. And you're gonna get three star rod, one mythical lure, 50 luck power-ups, and 30 weight power-ups to help you catch bigger fish. Did you say mythical lure? Yes, I said mythical lure. Something similar to maybe a dolphin fish? Yeah. Listen, the same goes for you guys. The link is in my description below. It's fishing clash dot link forward slash heavy D sparks. Download the game, use the gift code that I'm personally gifting to you, which is fish with David, and you're gonna get over $20 worth of upgrades for free. It's basically everything you need to get right out there and start catching the really big fish instead of the really, well, absolutely nothing. And also that's 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 my daughter's, that's Charlie's. Well, she said I could borrow it. Come on down, but let's just go download the game and, and maybe actually catch some real fish. How do you feel about that? Guys, download Fishing Clash now because it's actually a lot of fun and it beats the hell out of getting skunked like my old pal here was. He's right, Fishing Clash. That sounds very simple. And if it goes that simple, fantastic. But uh, nothing ever goes perfectly as planned. Getting here alone was an absolute miracle. The fact that we were able to get in, we were able to launch a boat that big last night, like. They're, they're not launching boats on this lake right now because the water level is so low. All the launch ramps are completely out of the water. Um, we got Chuck, the owner of Pavati, good friend of mine. We got Billy Luber, uh, our spray paint guy, also my mortgage guy. Uh, we've got other YouTubers. We've got literally just the, a smorgasbord of people. I think there's like 27 of us. So uh, I'm just really excited to get this boat out on the open water and just get it rolling and see what it does because it's supposed to be big, fast, and powerful. And so far I see the big part. I hear the power, and then we're gonna see how fast it really goes. So, like I said, about 10 miles up lake is where we're headed. And if you've never been to Lake Powell or seen Lake Powell, you are about to witness some of the most beautiful scenery you've ever seen in your entire life. So buckle up, because like I said, this recovery is gonna be crazy. And it's very personal to me because, you know, when you sink a boat with your family, that's like a big deal. Everybody's fine. All the kids had life jackets, no problems, no harm. Uh, it was actually a, a, a pretty pretty cool experience watching my family. Everybody did exactly what they were supposed to, jumped right into action. So with that said, we're just gathering a few last minute uh, provisions from up at the parking lot, making sure we got everything we need. Um, Tightening down some bolts here because obviously this boat is, uh, <laughs> we just barely put it together. It hasn't been in the water for a long time. And uh, this is also gonna be a learning experience for me because I've driven jet boats, but I've never driven a twin engine, thousand horsepower jet boat with giant bucket controls. So basically, it is completely different than driving any other boat you've ever seen in your life. It's like a mixture between driving a, a wave runner and a wakeboard boat and a houseboat mixed with a school bus. There's a lot going on there. So you'll see me flipping levers and doing this and that, but I feel pretty comfortable with it already and uh, we're just ready. So let's go. Yeah, I'm a huge cat guy. Okay, check out these glasses I found in the Kenworth. Hey Dave, the glasses turned out great. I'm glad they fell out so many times. <laughs> so today's gonna be nice because I think we're probably gonna be just about the only boat on the lake other than a couple of bass fishermen. But a little bit of wind today, so it might be a little bit of chop, but with how big this boat is, you won't feel it. And uh, as soon as we get out of the uh, no wake zone here, we'll be able to uh, hammer, down. hammer down and see what she does. There's little straps on the side to make it bigger. Don't you just sink anyways with that or without that? Awesome! Swim? Huh? Can you swim? No. Oh, jeez. No bueno? <laughs> Jim has a good history with boats. I've always sunk one boat. He said that's where he was going, and he said to just kind of hang around here. That's what he said? Until he comes back. I thought I saw him head out. Yeah. Did he head out? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to save the old family boat. She should be straight down somewhere in this area. Um, the RBP, no, RPB, River Ryan Patrol Boat. Man, I'm so bad with these Army acronyms. Um, and it's not even an army, it's a navy. These military acronyms. 
they're gonna unload their kayak. Their kayak uh, has sonar, so they're gonna be able to just basically scan this whole area. GML also has a depth finder. I don't have a depth finder on here because obviously we haven't had time to put anything on here yet. Um, but uh, we're gonna find out real quick how deep it is, and Jared's gonna be able to show us the contour of the lake bed. Awesome. Jared and Doug are sitting uh, in their little kayak right there with the sonar. Right there, yeah. Okay, so now go forward. Go forward. It's right here. Yep. Uh, they believe they found the boat and they believe it's just sitting upright, right on the bottom. Hopefully, hopefully that is just the bottom and not just right on the edge of another cliff or something. Um, it seems to be seems to be about 80 feet deep, which matches kind of the numbers that we were looking at when I when we went down. Remember, because that's about where I was when I thought I could make it to this shore when I was swimming, because uh, I didn't think it was going to sink as fast as it did. So if it is right there, they're going to uh, gear up to start diving and they'll drop down in there and then we'll figure out whether we're gonna lift it with the uh, lift bags or whether we're gonna pull it with a winch. But it's cool, they, they found it and it's not upside down. How you feel, Chuck? Relieved. Yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping the prop's not bent, you know? <laughs> we'll fire, we'll fire it right up and get out of here. <laughs> what happened? Did you put Al in? No, he put that on his own. There you go. Al, what did you just do? <laughs> he jumped on. He pushed the boat away, so I didn't want to go for a distance. Now you wanted to hang out with him. <laughs> you went to pure panic mode, it's just like a pencil. <laughs> we found Dave's boat. Found my boat. We found your boat. Your boat is sitting upright, tower's up. There's really? going to be an easy pick. What's the bottom of that? Right Other now? than the boat's at 95 feet right now. 95 feet. 95 feet. There's all types of risk. Really, really serious risk. Anytime you're diving near 100 feet and you're, we're literally diving around boulders that are unstable, whether you're talking, you know, nitrogen levels that's coming up too quick or the unstableness of the, the terrain down there. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably nitrogen narcosis we can actually end up with. We can end up with bubbles in our bloodstream um, if you cannot get us to a hyperbaric chamber quickly enough because we happen to come to the surface too quickly and that happens to us, um, we could die. It's not a fun dive. You know, we're, we're diving deep to do a recovery. So you're, you're talking about something, one of the most dangerous dives you can get yourself into. We're not going down to look at coral reefs or none of that. We're about to recover a $400,000 boat. So here soon we'll have a boat float. It'll be badass. Two divers in the water right now. Doug's only going probably 20, 30 feet deep, um, while Jared's gonna go all the way down and rig up the boat by himself. Also, we just realized that we don't have comms. Something's not working right with the, uh, with the underwater comms system. So all the plans that we had to know what was happening have completely changed. This just got a whole lot more like, risky. Yeah, that's just, it's just got, we, we're, we're completely, we don't know what's going on anymore. We're blind right now. Readings on him, it's his air pressure. No communication, no idea how much oxygen he has. We're literally basing everything off of bubbles right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they're smart and they won't do anything that's unsafe, but our biggest responsibility on the surface is to get these boats out of the way because we don't want the balloons to come up and freaking bring the boat right into our boats. Not ideal by any means, so I'm gonna be on my boat ready to go. See, I've been put in charge of uh, getting fish tacos for dinner. So uh, I'm out here at the fish store. Oh, 
I found the boat. Yeah, my, my gas cans popped okay. up. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's one of the gas cans that I had on my boat. I don't actually don't remember having gas cans on there. Jump in here and scare my fish while I'm gonna be pissed. Ooh, I'm no hit. <laughs> Get him. What are you gonna hook to the hole on the on the boat? Right now we're gonna hook a carabiner to the red line. Yeah. Through the hole. The uh, carabiner is gonna go through the hole. And then from the carabiner, I'll be able to hook go your line to the winch line to the carabiner. Okay. The good news is we found your boat. Good news is we found the boat. Honestly, I don't. I didn't remember taking fuel cans. So when that popped up, I was like. I don't think that's my boat. Well, funny, he's <laughs> been asking us all where those cans are. He's like, where are my sure cans? The seat clearly says Pavardi, so this is your boat, right? Yeah. Oh, well, right. Do, or do we have that, two of them in here? You know what actually did it was the climb strap that you cut. Uh -huh. I remember that. That's my strap. Yeah. All right, so basically what's happening is um, the boat is really heavy. Jared ran out of air, so he was only able to get one full lift bag on there. One full lift bag is the equivalent of about 3,000 pounds. Had he had enough air down there, he could have had the second bag on there, and it probably would have popped the boat. Um, but we don't, we ran out of oxygen, we ran out of the air tanks. So if we want to be able to use another airbag, that means we got to go back to the marina and grab the tanks, which we can do, but we also have, we built the winch for this very specific reason. So we're going to try one more thing where Doug's going to go down. He's going to run our winch line down and connect it to the front of the boat. From there, we're going to winch it to the top. Okay. Or we're just going to start, you know, rolling it up and uh, see what happens. Hunter, how much, how much winch line do you think we have on that winch? When we measured my Raptor, it had 80 feet. So let's put a, let's put a, uh, like a 10 foot cable on the end of it or 20 foot, whatever we have. We'll be floating here soon. We'll be putting some more bags on it. Like it never happened. No pressure wash. Never know what was down there. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of things we are out of our control. Uh, we can't account for 100%. Honestly, that's the reality with any recovery. How slow are you gonna ascend? Me? It's just standard. I'm, I'm gonna shoot You're right standard. down. So hook it up. I'm wondering if I, rather than free spooling you, I just I just winch you down. That way, we don't run into the risk of, of not being able to stop a free spool. Okay. Cool. That'll work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because this is a fast winch. Okay. All right. This is, a, this is a Hail Mary. If this doesn't work, if the winch isn't working or whatever, then we're just going to let the boat rest where it is. We're going to hopefully keep that bag inflated, come back in the morning with fresh tanks, float it the proper way, and do it like that. But if this does get up to the surface right now, we're basically going to try to drag it over to that beach. Um, and then hopefully get as close to the shore as we can, which is gonna be a little tricky. I'm gonna have to kind of like nose it around, but I think we will be able to do it. Um, we'll see what happens. I honestly haven't seen anything like this before, if I can say that. We 
got this red line that goes straight down to the boat. We're going to run the winch line right next to it. So he has a nice easy track down to the boat. We'll hook the winch onto the boat. We'll have the diver come up. We'll start tugging on the boat. Hopefully it breaks free. Steve, run this out. winch line down I was able to get the winch line on the boat itself and I put both of our carabiners through the lift bag again and the extra ring because on their weld there's two rings so it's it's on there pretty good the, the only way this boat's not coming up is, it, is if that winch can't do it two carabiners through each eyelet winch hook through both of those carabiners plus back through the bag yeah yeah, so it's like a foolproof. If one breaks, the other's gonna pick up and... So this is yeah. coming to the surface. Everybody, yeah. I'm gonna start the engines the because we... The welded, man, it's, it's coming. Oh, it's coming, for sure. So, uh, we have a, an emergency plan that for some reason, the bag flops and it starts to pull us down. We're gonna cut the winch line. We're gonna hit the free spool. We're gonna do everything we can to make sure that it don't bring this boat down. I don't think it has the possibility of doing that, but... Now it's all time to see if my welds are going to hold. Find it up on one side. This winch is kicking ass. This boat is rocketing to the surface. It's working flawlessly. It's perfect. Couldn't have asked for it. It got stronger as it came up higher, right? Because less, less pressure. Because I already filled it at the bottom. Yeah, so the that's the nice thing about the, the open same. bottoms is I can maximize the pull power uh -huh. all the way through the entire lift. Perfect. And so then the water that you saw was releasing was because it was coming up and letting that extra air as it comes up. What's this black line we have here? That's off your boat. That's like a that's anchor line. Or... Oh, that's that's the line that I was trying to swim with. Uh, can you guys grab this line and cut it? Yeah. Give me a knife. Or or grab it. Put. Let's pull it in here. Actually. No, we're good. We can get this to the beach now. If the bag is holding up, the bag is holding up 3,000 pounds of the Pavati weight. If that bag pops, so, hey, it could quick. potentially pull the nose of this boat down. This is a this is an interesting part of the story. That's my black anchor line. That when I when I saw the boat sinking, my last ditch effort to save it was I jumped off with an anchor 
I don't know if there's an anchor on it or, or if I just took the rope, but I was going to tie it off on those ropes over there, or those rocks over there. And uh, then when I felt the boat sink, that tugged, yeah, see, that's exactly what I was trying to do. I was trying to lasso a rock. <laughs> that's wild. I was gonna lasso one of those rocks to try to keep it from going any deeper. So we have the Pavati roughly, well, how tall are these bags? Six feet? The tip of the Pavati is about six feet below uh, the front of this boat. And the boat here is not struggling at all. So what we're gonna do is back over to that beach over there because that's a much better workable area. And then we're gonna uh, just basically, we're gonna work from there. All my welts are holding, so I'm happy. I was like, snatch block in the sand and they run the winch up through the snatch block to the boat to try to help pull the boat up on shore even more and then we get winched the back up and hopefully the trash pumps will start pumping all the water out and the boat will actually float again might be a little optimistic hopefully it works out because then we can just book it back towing the boat as a floating boat nothing ever goes perfectly as planned You want to take the lift back completely off and bring it as high as we can? Let's get closer and then uh, we'll see what it does. Okay. So the reason the reason behind seeing if the boat will hold the entire weight of the Pavati is the higher we get the boat up, the more clearance we have on the rocks before we try to shove it up on the beach. We got to get as close as we can because we still got to get it up out of the water. It, the bag deflated. Yeah. We've got all of it. The bag deflated. Yeah, there's the boat. Yeah. Oh, that, that is a beast. Okay, I got give me directions. What are we doing? Okay, hold it up. All the way. I would tail in as far as you can. What are you saying, Jim? I would tail in as far as you can, and then swing your ass in and leave the boat. I'm gonna get as close as I can, and then I'm gonna 90 degree towards the beach. What I would do. The, hey, Dave, the bow is towards you. So when you turn around, you're gonna put the wake tower on the beach, and the bit's gonna be bow up. Is it still pointing the same direction? I got dirt coming up, so I don't want to fill my strainers. Let's go bury some anchors and let's winch it from here straight up onto the beach. Shoveling through rocks with a plastic paddle. And it's not effective. I need my boots. These little floppy shoes. I can't get a good enough hit. I'll need somebody with boots to kick this in a little more. Mm -hmm. 
So basically, what we're what we were able to accomplish today is we drug the boat from the belly of the beast. Okay, um, we had it winched up to the front of the uh, this boat here. Had the bow basically in the air. We drug it all the way across the bay to a sandy beach. Now the problem with that is we don't have any more lift bag. We don't have any more air for the lift bags. So we don't have a way to get the boat lift up. So the plan was to be able to anchor to the beach and then run a snatch block up there, run the winch through it, and then drag it onto the beach. And then in doing that, we would be able to pump it out, get the water out of it, and you know be able to get it floating again. The problem with that is uh, it's getting dark. There's nowhere to anchor up there. We don't, we don't have any shovels with us. Um, these two little ducks won't leave us alone. <laughs> um, and so basically, Morning. You guys ever tried doing this? Feels really good. <laughs> Somebody just handed me a tinfoil pouch of bacon and sausage, which is probably the best thing that's happened all morning. Steering's getting a little stiff. We got the boat in about 10 feet of water. Ran out of air to lift it. Uh, the winch was doing a good job, but the problem was the winch can only lift one end of the boat and we need both ends of the boat out of the water to be able to pump the water out of it. So we got fresh airbags and uh, we're headed up lake and we're gonna be able to get this thing lifted out of the water here pretty quickly. Tow back to the marina and we should be done. Yeah, they're pumped. Right now we're just checking, checking position, seeing how the wind is, is pretty, pretty significant today. I'm willing to sacrifice a wet foot. I'm one side and I'll give you a second one. Perfect, Hunter. We, we've got a diver in the water who's hooking two of the airbags to the back of the boat. The back of the boat has two very stout lifting rings and they're deeper in the water. The problem we have now is we're kind of in shallow water, so these bags are so big that like, we have to find a point deep enough on the boat to be able to lift, otherwise the bag will fill up and just sit on the surface, but it won't lift. So that's what's happening right now. We're also, we've got Hunter on the shore with a shovel. He's gonna bury a couple of big sand anchors just in case we need them to be able to, because we're fighting this wind right now, coming through the channel, it's just like, if we didn't have wind, we'd be fine, but this wind is just killing us. Here he goes, Kong. Reminding you that there's there's still cooler things to do. How often do uh, I mean I know you hear this all the time, but you're a crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, I don't feel crazy though. No, it just yeah. feels normal. No, yeah, yeah. Is that how crazy people feel? Yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm insane, but oh, I guarantee it's you're a different insane. type of crazy. It just feels good though. It does feel good. We're so close, man. We are uh, basically we've got. The boat rigged up in the rear with airbags. We now have the winch line hooked to the bow of the boat and we're running it off a snatch block to an anchor on the beach. In theory, that should take the Pavati and literally pull it up straight next to us. I don't know if you heard Doug the diver, but he came up, he said, there's no plug in it. I don't know, maybe the plug had to have popped out somewhere up the canyon or...
When the boat first popped out of the water like an hour ago, that's that was the moment that was like very real to me. Now it's just like I can't wait to get in and see what I left in there. there. Got to be wide enough to fit that. I'm teaching a master class workshop on knot tying. This is a bowline, double taut line, reverse uh, Hector knot. I stepped on what appears to be a uh, an aspen pine fork uh, twig. These are found in the Western Hemisphere only here, around these uh, parts near the other aspen pin fork. Trees. Hey, can I park here? Throw me the water skis. <laughs> I thought so confused. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want from me? I don't problem this thing. I got no gas in it. I'm not a slob of a boat owner. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> you need another rod for your boat? <laughs> oh, please tell me that's my tool bag. What do we got here? Oh, my surf foil, sweet. I don't really remember having fishing poles. <laughs> I bet you this guy still works. Come on, you. I've been cursing hands so bad for so much of this stuff that I'm finding. No cobalt set, good to go. Oh, the tecton wrenches are still tits. Drain a little water out of my toolbox. I was so prepared, dude. I had fuel, tools. A little rusty, but. All right. The bigger fishing pole. Jim, dibs. Hell yeah! <laughs> You're looking for those. <laughs> you need the keep off of the boat? <laughs> uh, no, but there's a oh, bait and tackle, Jim. Oh, oh multi surface cleaner. We're good. Yeah. I think that's an instruction manual. <laughs> <laughs> what to do in I'll case it's sinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it was a dry pack, so let's see if it works. Is it dry? Dry pack did not work, but I don't know why I was trying to keep a paddle dry. Oh, oh, the garbage sack! The garbage sack! <laughs> <laughs> There's a smell. <laughs> Put that back to the bottom. Let's run the, the winch until the anchors fail. getting the boat on the water or on, on the beach and Chuck goes to the edge of the boat to take a leak drops his truck keys in the water he's the one pulling the truck home he, he's his only set of keys the only other way to get a set of keys for his truck would be to get them from a dealer somewhere like it would have been days multi-day process so 
That was a that was a good find right there. Yes. Oh, we'll end of that video. Yeah, a round of applause for Dougie Fresh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God, dude. All right. It's a sign. We got to get out of here. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we got to pull this boat fast enough to get it on plane and that means it's got to come up out of the water almost. Once we're doing that, it's going to empty these ballast tanks that filled and it'll it'll drain all that extra weight out. Once that happens, Hunter's going to close these T-handles and shut everything down. So we're going to go this way. drive back from the recovery site uh, headed to the launch ramp right now which uh, is not the most ideal launch ramp in the world it's still a little bit out of the water but it's the only one that's kind of usable so we've got the boat in tow right behind us and we're just gonna basically kind of just muscle it on uh, obviously since it doesn't run uh, we do have a good pull point so the winch on the trailer we'll be able to uh, winch up no problem Get her loaded up and uh, said old Chuck E. Cheese on his way home with her.